I know it's only May, but I have to warn you, there's going to be a lot of Christmas trees in this video. Hello, my name is Brian Locke and I'm a maker from Ireland. Recently, I posted a picture on Twitter of this board I designed for testing out layouts for side-mounted LEDs for shining through the FR4 material. I normally call this reverse mounting LEDs, but it doesn't really make sense for side-mounted ones. The tweet got a lot of interest, and I don't think people were really that interested in the board itself, but I think they were more interested in the concept of reverse mounted LEDs. This is something I first used for my first PCB tree a few years ago, and I've since been working on newer versions of them to try make it more assembly friendly so I could potentially sell assembled ones. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the process of reverse mounting LEDs, and then I'm also gonna go through the different LED types that I've tried with this and the success and failures of them. Before we start looking at specific examples, we first need to understand how this works in general. And in order to do that, we need to take a look at what elements a PCB is made up of. The first thing to look at is the FOR4 material or the fiberglass. This is what makes up the majority of the PCB. On a two layer board, everything else is on top of either side of this. The next layer is the copper layer. And this will cover the entire part of the PCB before manufacturing starts and will be etched away to create the traces or whatever other copper shapes you require as part of your design. The next layer is solder mask, and this is what gives the PCBs their color. So earlier on, we saw a white Christmas tree and then these green Christmas trees, and that's just a different solder mask being used on each of those PCBs. Then the final layer is the silk screen, which is the white circle that you can see there. This is normally used for text and marking out footprints of your components and things like that. The idea behind the reverse mounted LED is you would expose the FR4 material on both sides of the PCB and shine the LED through on one of the sides and it should get diffused on the other side then. It's worth noting that different providers will have different FR4 materials and this will impact how the LEDs shine through the board. These ones are from JLC and they're actually a pretty good example of what you want for diffusing the LEDs. Previously, I ordered some from Electro and they were much more yellow. It still worked, but it didn't shine through as good. But even I've gotten some from JLC before that were completely different and it impacted how the LEDs shone through. Next, let's take a look at the different LEDs I've tried and we'll see what works well with them and what doesn't. So the first version of the PCB tree used 0603 regular LEDs upside down. So their surface mount LEDs mounted the opposite way around. And there is a problem with that, which I'll show you under the microscope in a second. But regular LEDs are incredibly cheap. But one thing for sure I would recommend doing is not using 0603 ones if you have the space like I did here but I was a complete sheep and I was following exactly what Dave Darko had done and I didn't have time to order a trial board and see how it worked out. So I did exactly what he did, but he was using 0603 because he had a small PCB. I had plenty of room for whatever size PC or whatever size LED I wanted. This is a 1206 LED and you can see I have tons of room. I could have put this anywhere. But let's look at this LED under the microscope and we'll see what the major problem is with these. So here are the LEDs under the microscope. So we've the 1206 one over on the left and then the 0603 one which are on the PCB tree over on the right but it's on its side. And the reason I wanted to put it on its side so we can show what the problem is you can see that the dome of the LED isn't as big as the PCB part of the LED. So what you need to do is you need to lay, you need to lay the LED flat on that dome while you solder it. So the pads of the LED are slightly elevated from where you're soldering to, and you want to keep that thing flat. It's not terrible. It's you get the hang of it, you know, putting it in place and keeping it straight as you solder it, but it is a bit of a pain. 
that's why the 1206 ones would be a lot easier because there's a lot more dome of the LED to lay flat on your board so it shouldn't rock quite as much. But yeah, that's the problem with the 0603 ones. The other major downside to using just regular LEDs is they're not pick and placeable. You basically have to hand solder them. From an assembly point of view, that's awful. It's just not a runner if you want to mass manufacture something or even do a small run of it. Like the PCB trees, when I was first selling them, a lot of people wanted the assembled version and it was taking me, even when I had a good roll going, maybe like half an hour to assemble them. And it's just not economical for me to do that whatsoever. I would have to charge way too much money for what the product was worth. So it just didn't make sense to continue with it. And that's why I went down the road of trying out different LEDs. The next thing I tried were Z-Bend LEDs, and these are specifically designed for this job. They're designed to be soldered facing into the PCB. These work great, they're pick and placeable, so that's all good. But the issue with them is they are incredibly expensive. So the cheapest ones I could find were from Mouser, and they cost about 30 US cent each in quantities of a thousand. For something like the PCB tree, which has four different colors of LEDs, that would require you to buy 4,000 LEDs. And then each PCB tree has 12 LEDs on it. So that would cost $3.60 for the LEDs on this board, which is just way too much for a product like this. So it really isn't a runner economically. To put the price into perspective, a single 0603 LED costs a fraction of a cent. And then even this LED that you can see in front of you, because I obviously didn't buy them in quantities of a thousand, this one cost more than the Atini 13 on the PCB tree, which runs it. It's crazy that a simple LED costs more than the microcontroller running it. The last thing I want to say about these particular LEDs from Kingbright was that I went on to Mouser, found this style of LED and just ordered different colors of them. So I ordered a red, a blue, a green, yellow, and I designed the footprint around the data sheet for the red one. But there was a difference between the footprints of the different, of the different color LEDs. So some were like the red and some weren't. So this is one of them here. You can see that the there's a mark on the LED, a little square over on the right hand side of it. And you can see I have a mark on my board indicating that those two should match up. So that's all good. And then you'll see over here that their square and my square are in opposite corners. And that is because although the LEDs are physically the same size and the marking is identical, what that marking means is different for the different LEDs. So on one LED, it indicates that that's the cathode side. And on the other LED, it indicates that's the anode side, which is absolutely crazy. But just something to be very careful about if you're using it in your design. Just make sure that you're designing, you're checking the data sheet for all the LEDs you're using, not just one of them and assuming it'll be the same for all of them. The next one will look pretty similar to the last one. Uh, physically, there are quite similar LEDs, but what it was is that I could only find two types of that Z-Bend LED, and as I mentioned, the price was really expensive. So I actually asked Makerfabs, would they be able to source those Z-Bend LEDs directly from China? And they weren't able to find equivalents of them, but they did find a source of a different reverse mounted LED that I can't show you under the microscope because I can't find them, but I have a picture of it from earlier. Basically, it doesn't Z bend down. What it's designed for is that you would put a physical cutout in your PCB. So similar to this corner of my LED, or sorry, of my PCB here, you would just physically put that cutout and the LED would sit into the cutout space. So it wouldn't give you that diffusing quality, but it could potentially give you just, you know, if you only wanted to assemble on one side of the board, but give you an indicator on the other side of the board. 
these LEDs, obviously you can see they're soldered in place and they do work, but this has to be hand soldered because there's a decent gap between where the PCB is and where the leg is. I just bent those legs down to meet the PCB. If I was designing a footprint specifically for this, I just used the same piece or same PCB as the Z-Bend ones. I would definitely make the pads a lot longer because it was kind of hard to get a good connection on them. They're another option. They're much cheaper. They look really good, but they're not pick and placeable. The final LEDs we're going to look at are right angled LEDs, which are just LEDs that are designed to be mounted on their side. The same way that we can see the color shining up towards us, the color will also be going down towards the PCB too. The design is the same as all the other ones where you're just exposing the FR4 material so it will diffuse through it. The positives about the right angled LEDs is they are pick and placeable and they are much cheaper than the Z-Bend LEDs. One thing though is they're not quite as good as the other LEDs that we've seen because most of the light is shining out the ways and not in towards the PCB, but they are good enough for the use case. The yellow ones are quite poor, that's these two here, but the green and red are very good, blue is pretty decent although a little dim, and the orange is pretty good too. So this is the LED, it's already been soldered on so don't pay too much attention to it. And yeah, you can see it's just mounted on its side, it's kind of hard to see, now let me just try to tilt this up. There's pads on this side of it here that you can solder to. It also has a green line indicating polarity and they're all the same, unlike those King Bright ones. And yeah, as mentioned, it works pretty well. So the original idea behind this board on Twitter is I didn't know what was the best way to do the layout for this. Like what would give you the best view of you know the led on the far side that if i mounted it down here would it give you an even flow if i mounted it up here what would it look like so rather than just taking a complete random guess and just sticking with that forever i just took a random guess and made the pcb tree but at the same time i made this thing to do some tests on you know which footprint works the best and in the end the one that was here was very highly voted on on Twitter, but I don't think it actually was the best in person. I think the camera just made it look like it was because it was definitely quite faded up near the top because the LED had a long way to travel to try, you know, get reach up here. So I would say probably the best was this one here which was quite similar to what I had for the PCB tree anyways. So I'm actually quite happy with the PCB tree's footprint, so I probably won't redesign it. But if you are interested in doing a similar test, this board is now open source and I'll link to it on my GitHub. And also on that page, there will be a link to all the LEDs that I tried and a small comment about them. So yeah, use that if it is useful for you. A final tip on these side mounted LEDs comes from Dan or Electron Village where he uses hot glue to diffuse the LED so he has three LEDs on this badge here and this one here has hot glue applied on the back and this one doesn't and as you can see the light is much better in the one on the right than it is on the left you can see the left of the T is quite dark on this one but it's pretty illuminated on the one on the right and that's literally just regular hot glue applied into place. And you can see there's his side mounted LED there, there, and there. And it's a pretty good effect. Not that manufacturable. Maybe you could ask your fab house to do a blob of hot glue afterwards. But it is a good thing to have in your back pocket if you're thinking about doing something similar. Sorry it's been so long since my last video. I haven't really just been in the mood to make videos. But hopefully now that we've gotten this first one out of the way, the path will be clear for a lot more of them. I have been working on projects on and off in the meantime, so I have plenty to talk about, but it's just a case of turning them into videos that might be interesting to watch. As always, I just want to say a huge thanks to the GitHub supporters for helping support the channel. 
I used that money to investigate things such as buying those incredibly expensive LEDs to see what the fuss is about. And yes, they're great, but we won't be manufacturing with them. But if you would like to support the channel, you can check out the GitHub sponsors link below. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.